This is an area that we've been watching with uh, a lot of concern, not just over the last couple of days, but over the last several months. Uh, and we've been in close consultation with the Iraqi government. Uh, you know, over the last year, we have been providing them additional assistance uh, to try to address the problems that they have uh, in Anbar, in uh, the northwestern uh, portions of the country, as well as the Iraqi and Syrian border. Uh, that includes, in some cases, military equipment. It includes intelligence uh, assistance. It includes uh, a, a whole host of issues. But what we've seen over the last couple of days indicates the degree to which um, Iraq's going to need more help. Uh, it's going to need more help from us, and it's going to need more help from the international community. So my team is working uh, around the clock to identify how we can uh, provide uh, the most effective assistance to them. Uh, I don't rule out anything uh, because we do have a stake in making sure that uh, these jihadists are not getting a permanent foothold uh, in either Iraq uh, or Syria, for that matter. In our consultations with the Iraqis, there will be some short-term, immediate things that need to be done militarily. Uh, and, you know, our national security team is looking at all the options. But this should be also a wake-up call for the Iraqi government. There has to be a political component to this, giving us the capacity to uh, extend our reach without sending uh, U.S. troops uh, to play whack-a-mole uh, wherever there ends up being a problem uh, in a particular country. That's going to be more effective. It's going to be uh, more legitimate in the eyes of people in the region as well as the international community. Uh, but it's going to take time for us to build it. In the short term, uh, we have to deal with uh, what clearly is an emergency situation in Iraq.